okay, what about the the different properties of these different these different liquids then? Well, we we already know that at the top they're going to have a low uh, melting point. Sorry, not well, low melting point actually, but low boiling point is what I meant, right? Um, because otherwise they wouldn't have got that high. If they had a high melting, um, if they had a high melting point, they would have um, condensed earlier on. Like, sorry, a high boiling point. And and then obviously down here, we got um, high melting point. Help, I keep saying melting point. High boiling point. So we know that. Uh, so the, I guess... Well, they're the main things. For, well, there are a couple of the properties, but the, um, I guess what we want to know is is why why is it does it have a high melting point and a high boiling point? Um, so the the ones with high boiling point, they have long chains. Okay, so we we drew these um all these high hydrocarbons have got are, are chains, aren't they? And um, and these. Um, have really really long chains now if they've really got we've got really really long chains they're going to have um, really strong forces between them so if we draw a, um, a molecule here but on this one I'm just going to draw a molecule as a line okay right so that you can imagine this line is one molecule um, with like say a hundred carbons on it and then you imagine another one next to it they will feel a force towards each other. And um, just like how it, they're called Van der Waals forces. Um, so I'll just get a text here. So the, these have strong Van der Waals forces um, because there's so many of them. And the Van der Waals forces, what they do is it, it, it just attracts one molecule to the next or one atom to the next. Um, it's what makes things solid rather than liquid or liquid rather than gas. Um, and it just holds things together. So um, so these, so if you have a long chain molecules, then in order to separate one from another and allow it to be totally free to move around as a gas, you, you can imagine it would be a lot of, a lot of energy because there's so many forces wanting to stick it together because it's because they're so big and hefty to move around whereas if you go something over here like petroleum and gas well um they they have a, a very a very low boiling point and it's so that, you know that's because they have a very um short chain so short chain molecules So petroleum and gas is actually mainly methane, which we we already know how to draw. So methane is just one carbon and hydrogens around the edge. So that would be methane. And that takes up the majority of petroleum gas. Um, so very, very low boiling point because there's not much force from one molecule to the next because they're so small. So each individual, to, to separate one molecule from another, there's not much, you know. In other words, if I try to separate uh, over here, you imagine right on the tip here, maybe there's a carbon there, there's a carbon there. Sure, I can connect, I can re remove that carbon from that carbon, but the whole, the rest of the molecule is still attracted to the rest of that molecule. So I would have to remove all of them in one go, and that's why we need so much more energy. So that's the... Um, that's 